Hello, and welcome to Steve's Backyard Bonsai. I know I've mentioned before that I used to work in Manhattan and that I used to walk through Central Park every day. And I've often thought about creating a landscape planting that brought to mind the same feelings that I had when I was walking down those sun-dappled pathways in the summertime and in the fall and in the spring. And walking through the uh, areas that had um, well, well-worn or well-weathered rock outcroppings and you would come upon this open field and there'd be all these trees that were seeming to be haphazard but really well thought out. So I've got some um, Chinese elm trees that I uh, from seed that I collected in Central Park and I'm going to use them in this planting. I'm going to try and recreate that feeling that I would have walking through Central Park. All right, let me get to it. I was given the uh, distinct honor yesterday of being nominated to uh, participate in the landscape challenge. Uh, the um, gauntlet was laid down to me by Candace from Bonsai Science, and I am proud to say that uh, I'm going to take on the challenge. Candace, your, your landscape was phenomenal. And I have to say that I didn't have high hopes for that water feature, but it really turned out beautiful. And the fact that it's going to be on your interior space of your house and it doesn't require a whole lot of care, that turned out beautifully. But before I get started today, I'm gonna to take you on a little update tour of the greenhouse, some things that are happening in the greenhouse here that I'd like to show you. Good morning, everyone. It's a very exciting day for Steve in his backyard. Well, there's nothing real special going on with my Thuja Occidentalis Primo. You can see it there. Looks the same as when I messed with it a few days ago. My Cherry Trio Buds are swelling nicely. I hope you can see that. I have a Mugo pine, which I'm itching to get my hands on. There's not much going on down there, but I do have to sort that out. I do believe there's some more trunk under there. Another project. There's my boxwood. Here's my American hornbeam. I'm loving how my Alberta spruce is looking. Now on to the other side here. My moss experiment. I think is showing some promise. I'm going to get as close as I can. I see some green in there. So this tray, which is got a mesh bottom, is in another tray, which I, when this dries out, and it's far from dry right now, but when this dries out, I fill this with hook water in it, and that keeps it moist. There's a lot of sphagnum moss under there. These are just some cuttings for plant, uh, trees that I had planted from seed last year. Actually, that's what they are. There's no cuttings here. These are the cuttings. The ones in front are common bald cypress. And I'm seeing some activity there, aren't I? Yeah, look at that. I'm trying to get roots growing on that. These are some Dawn Redwood cuttings. That back there is that Euonymus alata, I believe, burning bush. And it's got some activity happening. Nothing yet on those ash seeds. I think they're ash. Nothing happening yet. And they may not. Those are the nuts from inside the, the uh, pods. 
And these are all of my little larch cuttings. I don't know about you, but that is exciting. Every single one of them in various stages. So I hope there's roots happening down at the bottom there. I really do. Moving around to this side of the greenhouse. And this is the reason I'm here. These are my Chinese elm, a few years old. They are really moving along, that tree especially. Uh, being in the greenhouse here with the temperatures being how they've been. Some of them are not quite as far along. This one, least of all. But those are going in my landscape into this pot. This is a 21 inch mica forest tray. The problems with these forest trays are that they're never quite deep enough. So you got to build up a retaining wall or something to give it height. These rocks will be placed here. I'm going to be placing them on little stanchions that I make from PVC pipe, one inch PVC pipe, at the height I want them. And they'll be below the soil line where they start. But these are to look like the rock outcroppings that you see all over Central Park. This is kind of my preferred view of this, and I kind of think that this will be the planting that you would best see from a drone if you were just flying over the park. The rocks will also be set in concrete, but the PVC pipe will keep them at the level that I want them. Coming through the rocks, will be a brick path. Each brick being hand laid. The problems that I will need to overcome is how to lay the brick. You don't want to lay it on bonsai soil. You don't want to lay it on muck. You need something hard. So I'm trying to figure out a way to cast a foundation and wherever the foundation would cross a drainage hole I'd have to bridge it and I've got some larger PVC pipe which I'll cut in half to create a little bridge so that water can drain and anywhere that that touches a that concrete comes in contact with a uh, a drainage hole I'll have to figure out a way to keep that drainage hole available to do what it was designed to do. And in the spaces, there'll be one space here, maybe a space here, and this whole side for my seven Chinese elms. This paper is here because I'm going to make a template of the top of my tray to place the walkway and the trees more officially. Luca, say hi to everybody. Oh, you want to just sleep, don't you? Okay. So that's my plan for the landscape challenge. I hope it turns out a percentage as good as Candace's.
And Nigel, yours is incredible with one major tree. And I'm very excited to, uh, to continue the challenge. All right, let me get to it. Oh, one more thing. In this pot with some spruce cones, which I'm beginning to think don't have any seeds in them, is coming up a little tree that I planted. It's from seeds that come out of these beans. There's a, a an old defunct bank in my town, and these trees are all along the outside, and they drop these beans. Well, the seeds drop out of the beans, and there was a whole pile of them. So they're a nice craggy bark tree. I'm not sure what it is. I'll do my research. Maybe somebody can recognize the seed pod, and I'll give that a go. Is it dumb to uh, raise bonsai from seed when you're in your 60s? <laughs> yes. And these, I just noticed, these rooted last year. These are common bald cypress, and they're coming back. I hope they all come back. So I have to add trees to my bald cypress planting. All right, let me get started on the real work here. Okay, the first thing I want to do is get the rocks out of here, take it off the turntable, and I don't need my turntable. I'm going to make a template of the inside of this pot out of paper. I know where I'm placing the rocks, so that's good. I drilled some other holes in here for wire. I decided to stop doing that until I know where my planting areas are going to be exactly. All right, let me get the paper on here. Okay, I've rough cut the paper to size, placing it down to so have about equal amounts on either side. I'm using this as a weight to hold it in place and to hold it straight. And I'll go into fast mode while I cut out the perimeter. Okay, this, this template is going to be for tree placement more than anything else. I've mapped out basically where the holes are, the drainage holes. I hope you can see them. Now I'm going to place the rocks basically where they were. going to check a reference photo. And the pathway is going to be elevated and it may have to squeeze in between these, but I need to get two and one eighth inches for the path. All right, it will enter being able to, I may have to raise it up to take advantage of this slope on this side, which would be good because it'll give me more of a hillside to plant against. So I've got it there. I think I have it all the way. Remember, in this 
pole is going to be underneath this. So I'm going to have to bridge for that. All right. So the path, I want to avoid the drainage holes if possible. So I got this. I can go this way or I can go this way. If I go this way, it gives me a bigger planting area on this side. I think I want the bigger planting area on this side. So why don't I have a gentle curve Maybe a less gentle curve. All right, let me finish drawing that in in fast motion. All right, this is roughly the path placement and the rock placement and the drainage hole placement. So I think two trees here, one back here, and four in this space. But let me sort of rough in where the trees would go. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trees. I may end up moving them slightly. Obviously, I don't know what the roots are going to do. Now, this pedestal that I have to make all the way down here, this is going to need to be narrower at the base than it is at the top to give the trees more room. And I'll probably should have multiple crossways through there so that water can get underneath it. But I think that's all for today. I hope you've enjoyed step one of this landscape challenge. I'm very excited about it. The feeling that you get walking through Central Park, or any park for that matter, on a bright sunny day with the sun dappling down and making the walkway shaded and then sunny and then shaded and then sunny. That's the feeling I want to convey here. And I think I've got the right trees for this planting. Certainly it's what I've been dreaming about. Uh, and thank you again, Candace, for the opportunity to uh, bring my dream to life. The rocks aren't perfect, uh, but it's all I had. I heard you say you picked up a rock outside a hotel in Chicago and that became your waterfall. Well, these rocks have been uh, put aside by me many, many years ago in the corners of my yard. I have a bunch of them. These are the only ones that really kind of match the color and the wear patterns of, uh, of the rocks that I've seen at Central Park. Um, and I think it will be an okay landscape when all is said and done. All right, thank you very much, and thanks again for keeping me company in my backyard.